will cause a mill to trip. Too much, uh, too much coal. Put too much coal in. Okay. So if you're putting more coal in than you're blowing out, then you can overfeed it, and this motor will trip. High temperature. So a temperature on the outlet of 165 will trip. No coal. No coal. So if the feeder trips, if the coal gate goes shut, both of those things will trip the mill. What would cause you to get this 165? All right, so a failure on the temperature control, that's a good theory. Yes, that, that would in fact get it there. That's not why it's there. Why it's there is if this coal chute gets clogged up with wet coal and the coal stops falling down, then you have to worry about blowing this thing into that, that thinned out environment, right? Going through an explosive stage. Well, since you're not putting coal in there to cool off, or to cool off the air, this air temperature starts going up in response. So that 165 was picked as a, a number that shows the temperature is rising above normal, which is an indication that you've lost cold flow through other means. It's kind of defense because there used to be a vindicator on here to tell you that the cold chute was stopped up. And those things trip the mills all the time for no, when we didn't want them tripped. So uh, because we bypass those, we have to have that 165 in there to protect against. Occasionally, remember I talked about these dampers not working? Uh, I think it's, it was Echo that was really bad about having those dampers leak by. So the hot air dampers would leak by and we'd have trouble keeping it below that 165 during a start when there's no coal in there at all. And we wouldn't be able to blow for 20 minutes because in seven minutes you'd get to your 165 and the whole thing would, would trip and be over. There's uh, misalignment switches on the belts. Those don't trip the belt. That's something else that I think used to trip it. And they decided they, they'd rather have it just be warnings. What is the, uh, so we see it all the time, just what's that dispatch flow? All right. So remember those vindicators that used to trip the mills? We took them out and then we replaced them with lasers. And this laser system was supposed to be able to tell that there was cold flowing and tell it that everything was fine. Those didn't work one leg. We, we did all five of them in an outage instead of just doing one as an experiment. And all five of them don't freaking work. They, they tell you it's plugged all the time, even though it's not. Every now and then, they out. <laughs> Every now and then, Alpha knows that it's low and cold. All right, what else trips it? All right, if, if the boiler trips for any other reason, low drum level, or uh, loss of both start water pumps, or generator breaker comes open for whatever reason, all those things that would trip the boiler, that trip the unit, trip all five mills, or however many mills you got running. Hopefully it's just one. Yeah, because it sucks bad enough to sweep four. <laughs> yeah, sweep five. Flame scanners, there's uh, there's two for each burner, and if you get four of them showing that there's no flame, boy, that might be three. Loss of flame can trip the mill. And I don't know a, I don't know how many burners it have. One burner blowing out will not trip the mill. It'll go, oh, okay, that, you, you can handle it. But too many of them blowing out will trip the mill. Uh, Low airflow will trip the mill. That's a rare problem. Uh, it's 
kind of related to the too much coal that we talked about earlier building up in there. If you don't have enough air, it's the same problem as having too much coal. You, you end up clogging it up and tripping it. So there's a trip prior to tripping on, on backed up that says, hey, you don't have enough air flow. You can't, you can't keep this up, dude. Uh, the only time I can think of that happening was we were uh, doing some sort of efficiency testing and some engineers were observing the mills and they said, let's try less primary air. Let's put a bias in there. Let's put a negative bias in there. And they, they kept walking that bias down until they walked it down all the way to the trip set point. A good control room operator would know he was getting close to that set point and would tell the engineer, go to hell. This is my plan. I'm not doing that. But back, back in the day, none of us were good control room operators. We were all taking the word of engineers on how things actually work. Loss of seal air, there's a seal air pressure transmitter, and there's a DP trans uh, pressure between uh, the, the seal air, uh, low seal air will, I don't think that will strip the mill, but I think it does ruin your start permit. So if this, no matter what the seal air valve says, if you don't have seal air pressure, then you can't get through your start sequence. Move oil pressure. Will trip the mill. So loss of the lube oil pump obviously will trip the mill. Higher supply on MCC going to trip the mill. Say that again? Say that. Higher supply on MCC. Yes. <laughs> Profi bus will trip the mill. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what happens when a mill trips? No sill that coal. Everything just stops. All right, everything stops. So the cut dampers go shut, the uh, guillotine damper goes shut, the motor stops, the feeder stops. Coal gate does not automatic, automatically go shut. So be aware of that. That's something you need to make sure happens before you start cleaning out the feeder. So we got coal in the mill, we've got some coal laying in these pipes somewhere, and we got coal sitting on the feeder, and none of that is okay. Uh, this coal, you leave it laying around, it starts getting hot, you leave it laying around too long, it's gonna smolder and catch on fire and burn up your belt or burn up some equipment, or it's bad. It's no, no, it's bad luck. So how do we get rid of it? How do we get rid of all that coal in the system? Just pull the mill. Mill sweep. All right, so for a mill sweep, we shut the cane, uh, cut damper, chain damper. We keep all the cut damper shut. We put seal air on. Pyrite hopper top gates open. We line up the pyrite hopper with sluice and water. I got more stuff to draw. Where does the sluicing water come from? Wastewater. So sump three. Where does it go? Bob Mash and Drag Chain. Those are the same answer. It's way up here on the top. Say what? You drag chain way up here on the top left. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom ash, you <laughs> sir. Yeah. It's like that. Not to scale. Not to scale. Not to scale. 
So, you open that water valve, you open that water valve, you get your flow, order matters there. If you open that one before that one, then you pressurize this leg of pipe that's not used to seeing pressure, and it blows water out the cracks, and it might blow apart the junctions. Um, once you've established that flow, you can open that bottom gate. You're not allowed to open that bottom gate if the top gate is open because the logic is worried about blowing water up into the mill. So first you'll see the top gate go shut, then the bottom gate come open, then the top gate comes open again. This is, this is a Venturi, a uh, jet pump. So it's like the, uh, it's like the fertilizer wands you use, right? You've got your, you've got your miracle grow and you got your hose water running across and it sucks the miracle grow out and mixes it with your water. It's like that. It's sucking whatever's in here out and blowing it over to the bottom ash. So, cut damper shut, chain gate shut, seal air on, line up the sluice, then we start the mill motor, and then all the stuff that's in there gets ground up and then without any air to carry it out, it ends up under this table. And there's two scraper arms that carry it and dump it into the pirate hopper. And then you're watching this pirate hopper and you've got water lined up in the throat there. And you've got water blowing at your screen there. And then you got water that's blowing straight down. I said screen, I meant, I meant the sight glass. And then you got a grating in here. That's clogged. That's clogged up on Alpha. Which I guess I didn't see it coming. You know, I I saw that they replaced the the grating with a smaller grating, and I was like, huh, should be fun. Let's still catch the rocks and pull them out. But nope, you get rocks that are the exact right size of that, and it's a problem. All right. When we're sweeping, about what time do we start putting a dirty stain in that? Uh, yeah, right before the mills. Anytime before the motor starts. Okay. And this if is that time where you'll be really thankful that you got cranked down to four turns, or two turns, three yeah. turns, somewhere in there, because if it is wide open, then this is not a pleasant place to be. Yeah. It's not a pleasant place to be anyway. All right, so then we're shoving all this coal in here, and then it builds up and it covers a sight glass, and then you call the control room, say shut the top gate. The top gate goes shut, and the sluice and water keeps going, and all the stuff that's built up in there now gets to fall through. And then you say open the top gate. Well, he can't open the top gate. No, he can't. Yeah, he can't open the top gate if the bottom gate's open. So he's got to shut the bottom gate, open the top gate, open the bottom gate back up. That's what they want to see. So, uh, and then you'll you'll watch it, and then it'll fill up again. And the amount it takes longer each time until after I don't know five or ten of these cycles, you go, all right, that, it's still dusty, but that's as good as it's going to get. Someday you have to get open up the tight glass and wash it out. Big chunks. Why should I clean it? Now, prior to starting, we should have already, with the top gate shut, opened that side glass and pulled out all the all the rocks we can. And then in the middle, you might have to do that again. You might have to shut that top gate and then open the glass and then clear stuff out. And this is one of those times when there's actual coordination going on between the control room and the guy on the floor. And the control room's pretty much doing what you say. He can't see when this thing's full and when it's not. So you kind of gotta, gotta listen to you, and then you gotta kind of be a little patient with him, because these valves don't operate quite as fast or as orderly as you might want them to. Especially if you don't realize that he's got to have this one shut to be allowed to open that one. 
then you're like, why the hell is he doing that? Does he even know what button he's pushing? I don't say anything about the damn bottle game. No, 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 it's part of how it works. All right. So then you tell him you got a good sweep, and he shuts off the motor, and then he does a pipe merge. So then you open up the chain gate back up, and then he lines up air, hot air shut, cold air open, and blows cold air through it for 10 minutes. 20 minutes? 10 minutes. I'm not sure. It's in the procedure. Read your procedures, then you'll know. And that's a milk sweep. That's close to everything I know about pulverizers. Hundred <laughs> percent. I I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a bunch. It's a bunch. Let's see. Right, let's go with a guesstimate. So at a full load. A silo drops about 10% in an hour, and at full load, one of these is putting out 80 kbph. 80 kbph is 90 tons an hour. So 10% is 90 tons. So then I got 900 tons in my whole silo based on that thumbnail calculation. It is, and we fill those silos four times a day. We we burn if we're pushing full load all day, we'll burn between eight and nine thousand tons. We're only pushing 45% load, we're in 5,000 tons. <laughs> but we'd rather be pushing full load for multiple reasons. One, one is it means we're making money. If they're not asking for full load, it means they can't sell the megawatts enough to, to keep us in the black. Uh, another is the unit just, everything is tuned for that full load. Everything is tuned for 730 gross megawatts. So it's more efficient. And also starting and stopping. Uh, motors are like 10 times more likely to fail on a start or stop compared to when they're just running. So the more consistently we can keep everything running, the better. All right, that's all I got. Anybody got any questions? Anything to add? Anything you think I missed, Jackie? Can't think nothing right now. All right. Did better than usual. Except for that something.